Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're looking at the encoding box from Hack the Box, and specifically we have a challenge where we have an API that I can read files off the host, um, and they come back either hex encoded or base64 encoded, etc. So what I want to be able to do is write myself some programs so I can easily enumerate the host, and I want to do it in such a way that eventually I can run a tool like Git Dumper against the host, because I've actually there is a Git uh, repo that I can access through these file reads, um, and I could write a script, but I'm a, if I wrote just a simple script to read files, I wouldn't be able to then proxy a tool like Git Dumper or if it was an SQL injection SQL map through that, and that's what I want to be able to do. So I'm going to write a Flask proxy, um, and uh, in that video, in this video, we're going to show how to do that. So um, let's dive in. All right, so let's talk about the scenario here for a second. I've got an API that I'm interacting with, and it's it's kind of a it's not a very realistic API. It's more of a, just a series of PHP endpoints, but we're going to work with it. We'll call it an API. Um, and basically what we're going to do is um, I'm going to interact with it in Python just to show you how it works. So we'll say like JSON data is equal to uh, action. We'll do string to hex. And then we can do file URL. And so the, the, the intended thing to do here is like HTTP 10, 10, 14, 6. That's my IP test.txt uh, like that. Now I better create a test.txt. So we'll do an echo. This is test text uh, please subscribe and we put that in test.txt cool and now we'll use a, a simple python web server like that to host this file uh, so now when i do uh, response equals requests.host and our url is http api.hacks uh, tables, I believe it is, uh, hack the box, and uh, v3 tool, tools string index.php, like that. And then we'll do uh, data, so I think JSON equals JSON data, like that. And we'll send it. And we did not, oh, mismatch quotes here. Uh, request does not import requests. And we'll run it. You can see I send a request out to the hack the hacks tables dot hack the box. It sends a request back to me, 10, 10, 11, 198, to get test.txt. And if I look at response.txt, I can see it's it's JSON data. Um, I can do response.json. And get that and then I can go ahead and pull out data like that and now I've got the object and I can do bytes dot from hex on oops on that and now I've got this is the text this is test.txt please subscribe so that's the way it's intended to work is it hex encoded that form um the vulnerability comes if we grab or sorry uh thing if instead of doing this URL we do a file uh, scheme, and we do Etsy hostname, for example. And now, if we rerun that, and if we then do our bytes from text from hex again, we read that file. Um, we could see, you know, maybe a more you know, a longer example that we typically see is going to see the password file. Um, get that, and I'm actually going to wrap this in a print. Uh, decode just so it prints nicely, and you can see there's an Etsy password file. So that's the vulnerability. Now I need to enumerate a bunch of files in this box. I don't really know where I'm going next, so I need to go exploring. And how am I going to do that? Well, I could do this like up arrows, change things all over and over again, but that's going to be um, annoying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a proxy. Now there's a couple ways I could do this. I could write a script that says like you know maybe it takes as an argument the file I want to read, and then it just does that request, gets the result, decodes it, and prints it. Um, I'm actually going to write a Flask proxy that listens on a server. And the reason is, whenever you have a case like this, you may want to then, down the road, try, um, maybe it's running the SQL map, or in this case, I'm going to want to run Git Dumper um, on over this proxy. And if I have a proxy just set up, I can just point that here, and it will just do what it needs to do, um, versus if I uh, try to uh, set it up. If I have a command line thing, it's not going to interact with those tools as well. So uh, let's get a new file here. We'll do uh, proxy.py. 
Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Okay, yep, create a file. There we go. Uh, we will start with our shebang. Uh, user bin env python3. Uh, we're going to need the request module. And we're going to need flask. So we'll do from flask import flask. Um, now, every flask app starts by creating this app uh, variable, which just takes in the underscore underscore name and creates that. Now I can use that app to dec decorate routes. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do at app.route. And that route is going to be typically this is where you'd say like slash home slash blog posts or whatever you want, right? Um, I'm going to have it do anything. When you put something in these uh, angle brackets like that, it basically says make this a variable. And when I put the path, path there, it says treat everything that comes after this as part of the variable. And the variable name is going to be file. Uh, so I come down here and I can do def get file. And I'll, I'll have to pass in that variable that I'm receiving, so file. Um, and then we can, we can even just do this. So we can do like print, uh, let's not print, uh, return file. Make this really simple and I'll, we'll just show you how it works. Um, now we can do if name equals name. Uh, and that just basically says, um, if this was called directly from the command line rather than being imported or something else like that, uh, we'll do app.run debug equals true. We save this. If we hit F5 to run, we'll see the Python file. So we'll debug that. Uh, and if with any luck, we will have a Flask server starting. Yep, so we have a Flask server here. Uh, it's listening on localhost 5000. We can grab this. Uh, we can copy, control, no, oh, I control C. Uh, let's F, just F5 to run that again. Um, that was a lot of time to just save myself typing a little bit. Control Shift C. And now if we do something like curl that slash OXDF, it returns OXDF. Um, so we can see we're getting the thing. If we do, um, OXDF slash OXDF slash hello. I don't know what that is, but you can see the whole, that whole thing gets passed in here. Okay. So we don't want to just print. We want to do something with it, right? So we will come here and we will do just like we did up here. In fact, we can just copy this. Um, JSON data equals. Base that here. I'm going to actually rename this to request uh, rec, rec data just so I don't get confused. Um, now we're going to say, we'll just do Etsy password to begin with. Obviously, we're going to have to update that. We'll copy this and we can say response is equal to that API. This is equal to rec data. And now let's just return response.txt just so we again, oh, um, uh, text. And again, we're just building this up incrementally here. Um, changing, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how debug mode works, uh, in this VS code. Let's just rerun it here. Okay. So we're good. Um, now if we come down here and we do, do, uh, Etsy, oh, it doesn't matter what we do because it's going to get Etsy password and we get back a bunch of text. Cool. Um, so we don't want response.txt. We want response.json. And then we want to get the data object and we want to do bytes dot from hex this. Now, if we save that, um, we'll see if this, I don't know if this reloaded or not. Let's check it out. Looks like it did not succeed. Let's come back over here and F5 this to get going. Let me just run this in another window. might be easier, um, but there we got Etsy password, right? So now we, we can see we're printing out the Etsy password. Now, the last thing we need to do is just change this so that we're not, um, we don't want to get Etsy password every time. Make this, and we will come here and put in our beautiful F strings, and this will be file. And so now, okay, we'll rerun. Now, when we come in here and do Etsy hostname, we get encoding, we do Etsy pass, password, we get the password file, um, and so this uh, this is gonna work. This is gonna allow me to uh, enumerate the box very quickly. So, all right, I'm back briefly. Um, I spent all this time telling you about how I wanted to do this because I wanted to be able to run Git dumper at a later step through this, and I went to run it and it fails. And so let's just take a quick look at this. Um, do I have it here? Let's run this uh, Python proxy.py. And if I run it this way rather than F5, I think it'll handle the resets nicely. Um, and so we get this thing where it says uh, testing, blah, 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 and it says responded with HTML. And um, 
I was looking at it in Wireshark and I wasn't seeing anything weird. It looked like it was just coming back with the file. I'm not going to bother showing you. I want to do that. I'm not going to bother showing you this. Um, and so we're going to take a look at Git Dumper. And so we will do a vim uh, home.local.pipx. That's how I've installed this. Uh, lib. Let's see. Uh, Bems git dumper. Now we want lib python site packages git dumper and dot uh, pi. There we go. And we can search right here. And we, we can already see it. But if we search for um, HTML, uh, turn true if the response is an HTML web page. So we have this is HTML and it's checking here um, if the content type is in the response headers and text HTML is, in the, is the content type header. Um, so we can see is HTML is called here. Um, we're going to assert, assert that and that's going to cause us problems. Oh no, that's not problems. Um, let's see. So if the code is here and uh, where do we see that error message? Anyway, that, that seems to be our problem with why it's failing. Um, so we have content type, content type header issue. Um, to fix that, what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and import uh, response. This allows us to, rather than just returning this from the function where then Flask will make a response out of it, we'll actually make a Flask response object. So we can do response like this. And then we can do uh, content type is equal to, and we'll do application. Um, I'm going to do octet stream, which is like basically raw data. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're reading files. So we, by definition, we want to just have this kind of raw data stream here. Um, and that should be good. So now we'll come up here and run our git dumper command again. And now you can see we're fetching all sorts of stuff. Um, if we cd the git directory and we do ls and sla, uh, there is a dot git here. We've got files um, checked out so we can continue with the box. Um, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. I'll talk to you next time.